Welcome to Unorthodox Perspectives with your host, Luke Burrows. I think like your mission, your vision, your purpose, your passion, it's all, it's all interlinked. And Leroy Mabonga. Discipline is the best step to control. All right, guys, welcome to episode 17 of Unorthodox Perspectives. We're here, I'm here with my, with my man, Leroy. Leroy, how are you doing? How's it going, Luke? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. Um, you guys, we're going live um, and recording episode 17 on a Friday. So Leroy um, had a very important meeting on Monday. So uh, yeah. we could record then. Um, how was that? Like, we, mate, we haven't caught up since then. So how, how was that meeting? Oh, it was good, man. It was good, you know. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> <laughs> No um, but yeah, yeah. Um, all is going well. Um, in the direction that we want. So um, yeah, I'll give you something more concrete when everything is good. No but problem. yeah, how are you? Also, how, are you week? how are you doing? Yeah. Um. Good. You know, both of us are obviously very busy right now. Um. Mm. But um. Yeah. So just like, focusing on launching some new events for Grow Together and everything. So we got um, introducing our networking events actually next Friday. So there was some work on that. Um, later this month, we're launching community events and some personal growth workshops as well, which is really exciting. Yeah. So um, yeah, just to kind of progress, man. Uh, I got back into the Grow Together podcast this week as well. Um, yeah. Took a little break from that. So we had the first guest on there for a little while. Um, so yeah, just, uh, you know, just making things happen, I guess, and, and mm-hmm. moving forward. So, um, so yeah, no, that's yeah. pretty much my week. Mm-hmm. No, that's good, man. No, that's good. <laughs> so yeah. in terms of, um, in terms of today's topic, do you want to introduce what we decided? I know we were talking earlier about it. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I need to check my messages now. <laughs> okay no so i i i i have it here so um but, yeah guys uh, we were talking yeah we were talking earlier about okay what to talk about today um and i think we decided on getting um getting used to a new way of life i believe i believe that's the that's it for, that's it yeah that's it yeah. Um, so Maintaining, that's it. Maintaining. Yeah, that's ultimately that's what we it. find. Yeah. Internet. Internet. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear. You. I can hear. Is it my side? I, I can change it. Um. So let me. Hmm. Let's see how it goes, and if it plays up again, I I can change it to my four G ultimately. But can you you you, go, you can hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, um, I believe that was the topic for today. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, maintaining. I thought about it. Um, I mean, we were both struggling in terms of what, 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 um, what topic? Because obviously, on Monday, the topics were kind of like we're really excited on in, into. Monday, but obviously we couldn't have the guests and the, the, the topics on. Hopefully we, we can bring them on uh, sometime in the future. But um, I guess when we were talking and thinking of last week, uh, last time, with our last episode we had, like, you know, we were talking about letting go, letting go and, you know, the themes of such. I was then just thinking to myself, like, okay, like, you know, we had touched upon like interesting topics from that um, and just in contemplation of the episode really I was just thinking like you know let go and I guess over the period um, I've just kind of come into this place where for me I feel like uh, I'm, I'm coming into a new space in my own being right and in that there is always a, a little like whisper you always have to say, do you really think you've changed kind of thing, you know? Like, do you really think you can maintain this new this new way of being, right? 
So it's it's that that which I'm trying to, to do. That's what I was talking about in terms of maintaining. Like once you have almost seen or felt yourself take a leap of faith. Um, how do you maintain that flight as much as it may feel like you're still dropping, right? Does that make sense? You know, and so, so yeah, so so I'll kind of share what I'm hearing and then we'll kind of see if we're on the same page. Yeah. So it's almost like so it's almost like you're um growing um and you're entering this new um kind of space right now through through this elevation, through your growth, etc. And through this, sometimes we have this voice in the back of our head that mm. is maybe that that voice of doubt, I guess, of mm. actually, are you growing? Are you actually changing? Um, and yeah, just this overall doubt, really. Is that is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly that one. Like, how do you how do you push through those those um, trackbacks i guess like that you may feel like you know you're you're you're, you're falling back into old habits or old, old ways or old you know way of being or, or you know and it, it goes into a lot don't it like we i don't know your 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 case uh, your, your story is always like applicable in so many examples but like you know you think to yourself like in terms of p- a place like you know you 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 are around people that you may not want and then let's say you want to change your life and sort of like do something differently to to get out of that and put yourself into a new place where it's you're constantly now you're maintaining that new way of being right it's a difficult thing when you think about it think about it right when we are around people that we are used to we become comfortable that's why we call that comfort zone you know what i mean so it's basically once you've pushed beyond that comfort zone how do you maintain outside that comfort zone? Because you've been in a comfortable situation or comfortable circumstance, although you may not want to be or you may not necessarily be content with that. So once you make that final push to change your ways, it's like those people will now start asking you, oh, so you think you've changed? Oh, you think you're better than us? Oh, wow. you don't want to chill mm-hmm. with us anymore. You don't want to hang out with us. Oh, oh, you know, those kind of things. They can yeah. really, they really like, you know, can have yourself doubting yourself, you know, it, you know, in a place where you are really trying to really explore this new being of yourself. When you go back to what I was talking about last week, now this theory I came off of about C, you know, with a triple E, it's like now that self-examination you've had, you've now explored a way to move forward. But then in that exploration, you are constantly hearing people that are, 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 are sort of, taking jabs at your expressions of this new form of being, of way of doing things, right? And it can become so, because you're still in that phase where you're, it's still inside, you still haven't grown to that confident level to to actually express that new way of being in a way that you feel like, yeah, you have a hold on it. You know, like the, the habits you've formed or the way that you feel like you are more productive, efficient, effective, whatever way, you know, to feel more content and all that. Maintaining it is possible, but um, uh, that's why I was saying now, it's that little transition there. I feel like a lot of people, you can become, um, you know, sidetrack, you know, you will make that step forward and you find yourself making two steps back because you are not able to just maintain that into that new, into into that new way of living or lifestyle or, or, you know, and um, desired way of being kind of so that's where the maintaining um topic was coming from really it's the 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 moment of transition how do you maintain the pace to complete that transition does that make sense yeah 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 absolutely and i like the part you said around like when you feel yourself growing and you feel yourself changing um and then people around you are kind of like now you know, they say things like, like you mentioned, you know, oh, do you feel like you're better than us now? You know, and I, I actually kind of felt that when I kind of started my entrepreneurial journey and personal growth journey, because I was learning, and you know, I'm still learning so much right now. And then I always wanted to kind of share that knowledge with others, ultimately, you know? And so, yeah, I just, you know, 
And so I just felt that I didn't, I never felt, I guess, better than anyone. I just felt myself growing ultimately. Mm. And maybe now there's like this space, right, between where me and my social group was and where I kind of am on this journey moving forward. Um, but I feel like that doesn't, that should that shouldn't like stop us from continuing that path of growth ultimately because you know i always said it like like if people want to grow with me like that's the whole point of grow together right like that's the whole point of my freaking business you know it's in the name like grow together you know like we we do it as a community we like we do it together so if if people like um wanted to do that and they were ready to, to kind of make that change in their own life. Like I'm here, you know, like e even right now, although I don't really have anything to do with, I mean, that's a lie. I don't have anything to do with old social groups and old social circles, etc. Like if they message me tomorrow of like, Oh, Luke, you know, the, um, I don't, I don't know. Like you've become more confident or whatever, or whatever it is. Like, like yeah. what steps did you take? For example, I would totally help them to figure that out for, for to figure it out what's it for them. Um, so yeah, um, again, I'm just kind of rambling right now, but I, I understood what you mean because I kind of felt that myself of like you're moving forward, you're now growing, um, and there's this I don't know this feeling, I guess, um, just this kind of feeling that. Or do they feel like I'm now better than them, even though I don't, you know? And, and sometimes it's like, as you said, the sentences, the words that they kind of say to you come out with their body language, their behavior of like now because you're moving forward and you're growing. So how do you handle it? Like if you've experienced that, how, how have you managed to navigate that? Myself, um... I think yeah, I've I've always had the knack of um I've I've always been very self confident, you know, like um I've never really been one to be too concerned with like people's opinions. So I felt like I feel like that has always worked in my advantage in when it comes to moments of like growth, like uh, realizing my own growth and like taking the necessary steps forward or, you know making the necessary like relational cuts and whatever. Um, yeah, so I think experiencing was in a fact of, I think the one time I really felt it was the, the period when I was like saying, okay, I want to go into an entrepreneurial sort of like journey and like my family were kind of like, oh, you should, do X, Y, Z, uh, plan A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, you know, and kind of, I was already kind of had set, like, and uh, like, once my mind is made up, that's the type of person I am, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't care. Like, even if we're best of friends, like, once I just say, you know what, I'm done. That's it, I'm, I'm done. So it, it's not going to be an issue for me. It's more or less like people look at me as if like, I'm heartless or like I don't care, but it's just that like I'm just doing what I what I feel like I need to. So it's never really been something that I I felt like um, it was a distract uh, like something that was holding me back. But saying that though, because of the way I am, I I'm, I'm not really concerned with people's opinion. Then there's the opposite effect where it's like, am I doing too much? I don't know if that makes sense, but like you know, I'm quite, I'm quite creative and like and inventive, and ideas kind of come at me like in different ways and perspectives. Mm. So sometimes I have ideas that are very far fetched, but in my head they are practically applicable. So when I do apply them, it sometimes like that's it's like it's a it's a it's a stark difference that will, will distinct whatever it is that I'm trying to do in a form that's like, yeah, like I'm really moving in a different way. And that can almost 
because of the way I am already, nobody really ever questions me. So when that happens, nobody really ever says anything. So you don't really know how people are judging what you've done. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You don't really know yeah, how yeah. people are taking out what you've done. Because maybe I've done so much that it's just like, you know, or you just do whatever you're doing and it's like, oh, he's, he's changed. That's, that's the way he is. So I've never really felt like that um, I've struggled with the maintenance part. If anything, it's my own self-work, like my own discipline, my own like control, self-control. That's been more of like a, an obstacle than like mm. people and circumstances and stuff like that. So yeah, so, like, so, that so to be very stout. So so we're kind hey. of talking. So so beforehand, we were talking about like facing that voice in the back of our heads, and obviously sometimes yeah. other other people's opinions can kind of trigger that. So is it for you that sometimes so other people's opinions for you don't trigger that? Um, it kind of comes from sometimes within. Like, do you doubt your yeah, you doubt yourself? But yeah, where, where do you think that comes from? It comes from that place of feeling like of feeling like what you want to do has never been done, right? Or mm. or whatever you wanna or whatever you wanna achieve has never been done in that degree or whatever it is, right? Or whatever it is that you you wanna do. So for me now, it comes to that point where it's like the doubt comes from. Okay, as I see it, it's possible, but in the eyes of others, kind of thing, you know, it's it's almost not it's not possible, kind of thing, right? So. In my mind now, or in my thoughts, it's almost like, ah, well, no, if nobody can do it, what makes you think you can do it? Kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Or, you know, not many people have done it. Why do you think, like, you can be one of them? Does that make sense? Like, it's just these little, mm. these, these little voices from within. That's really kind of being like a devil's advocate towards whatever it is that you've charged or, you know, just charged yourself up to do. Kind of thing. Mm. So yeah, I feel like for me, it's always been like it's it's always been personal. To be honest, it's always been personal, like within from within, and that's where now my way to to maintain my way to maintain in that course of transition is to go back to the re the written work that I wrote, you know, before. In a way, it's almost like if I'm working towards something, right? I'm always kind of documenting how I'm feeling or how my mind is working to in that space of time and come to that place where I feel like I'm transitioning into a new, you know, and I'm trying to maintain that new way of being. And when I'm now struggling with those thoughts or inside voices and, you know, all that's coming in and trying to like just kind of um, shake me a little bit, I go back to what I wrote. Because it kind of gives me a, a, a linear understanding of my journey. Not to say this is just the one instance, but I've built myself to be at this moment. So I should see myself through. Does that make sense? So in that, that keeps me from like really doing a backtrack and going back to old ways because I'm keeping myself accountable and at the times when I, I don't feel like there's anything to to actually account whatever it is that I'm doing for, I can look back at my own old self that was saying wants to be where I am today to push me forward. Does that mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, so, that, so like, I, I am interested in that though because even when things come from, let's say, obviously here we're talking about doubt. When doubt comes from within. We're not born with doubt. So still that doubt has been has been um, placed on us from an external source, you know. And so I'm I'm curious on if you've kind of discovered on maybe like the underlying beliefs that have been kind of been for you that have been um, planted or you know um, on you. Um, does that make sense? Because again, you know, yeah. like because like when we're born, you know, we, we you know 
we're not born with doubt or fear or whatever it is. It's then our experiences as we grew up and through life that basically create that and we form beliefs around our experiences, et cetera, et cetera, that mm-hmm. pretty much create our lives, you know? So even with the doubt that you experience within, within where do you feel, and I completely understand what you're saying, like it, it comes from wanting to achieve big things and do big things and then having this kind of thing of like, like you believe it's possible, um, but outside sources may not. Where do you still feel like that doubt can't like that those underlying beliefs i guess where mm. they, they, they come from yeah that's a really good question um personally i feel that what you're saying is true um in terms of the obstacles that we find most like difficult to overcome when we come of age are those that have been ingrained in us um, based um, uh, through belief and through precepts that we have come to view life with. And sometimes it's very hard to now, like, um, to to take on certain, like, things in life because because of what you believe or because of where you've come from, because how you were raised, they just, they just don't seem possible, right? No matter who may tell you that it's possible, until those beliefs are changed, you will never see there's any different. And for me, I think because of where I've come from, man, like uh, I'm from Africa, as I've told you before. But like for me to be here today, like to be even on the internet and you know be able to do this podcast and stuff like that. If you ask me about 15 years ago, even 12 years ago, if I ever saw myself in such a place, I would tell you no. Do you know what I'm saying? Because Life to me back then was totally different. And the precepts you have and the beliefs that you have are totally like in tune with how your circumstance or your environment may be around, right? But as I've grown, as I've come to this country and then learned and like, you know, um, just you you come to an age where, you know, you, you think for yourself. I've come now to realize that there are certain beliefs that I held that are now something that I'm struggling to to just basically like let go to deactivate basically you do not you you do not you do not like erase a leaf you deactivate it because it's like Father Christmas right you and I know that there is not really Father Christmas but at the young age when you were told that there's a Father Christmas the belief was so strong that if your mom was to say, Father Christmas is by the door, you would run over, right? But now it's a different story. If your mom was like, look, there's Father Christmas by the door, you're like, okay, tell him to leave me a street. I'll come down tomorrow or whatever, right? Because your your belief is not making you act. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? You have deactivated 100%. that belief as, as much as you know that at one point it used to be a belief. You know, so... That's where I, I've been, like, yeah, I've, I've totally realized that fact of, like, your beliefs, like, and where you come from and how you've been brought up, they really do um, add on to a lot of how you perceive life and what you can achieve. And until you can not remove them, but deactivate them into a space where they are dormant, and then you cultivate those beliefs that you understand you want to, to live your life based on, um, that's 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 the only way to be honest i feel like to to maintain that transition in a way that you understand that they certain beliefs or certain precepts that are really making this transition hard but in you understanding that fact that you are you are you've acknowledged that i think we have to acknowledge that because the more we run away because some people will run away from their childhood past right and as much as it can give you solace for that time being, it really limits the amount of things you can you you think are possible for you, good or bad, whatever it may be that you want to do. It, it, those things that we grow up on, I think that's why it's so important, like for children, for parents, to really teach their children, like in a way that it's not passive. You know, don't passively teach a child life because then when they come of age, 
everything they've learned has been passively uh, taught because as a parent, I'm talking from experience now, if you are passively just raising your child, you don't really have um, a point of reference for your child to understand that there's certain things that, there's certain beliefs or precepts that they are learning from you as a parent about the world. Whereas when you just passively teach or raise your child, you're almost acting as a parent, but you're not really um, instructing. Does that make sense? You're an instructor as a parent. You are the instructor, you are the teacher, you are, you are everything, right? But as the child grows and they become more independent in terms of like being able to eat, walk, whatever not, we become more and more passive parents than we are more interactive and involved in that child's learning, right? Imagine if your child, if your, if the parent, if our parents were so involved in our lives as they were when we were starting to walk, holding our hands and trying to get us to step, 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 right? If now you're coming at the age where you can think for yourself, you are questioning, you are asking questions, you've got questions about life, you got questions about what's possible, right? Like you said, we are born without doubt. But if I never really explain to my child, like, why I am instructing him or why I may be telling him, like, off, like, if he's about to touch a hot something, a hot radiator, right? If I'm jumping and, you know, and I don't necessarily convey why that has happened or why I, I, I communicated as I did, they may come to a place where it's like every time they want to do something, there's something, there's someone or, you know, who's just waiting and to just tell them, no, stop, right? I understand, yeah. And what does that do to you now as a person, as you grow older? When you now are having an, a, a place where you want to make a decision on doing something yourself, you come to a place where you are now what? Uh, oh, there's no one to tell you stop or no or what? But those were ingrained those are the first few things that were ingrained in you you just were confused you know mm -hmm. like as a child you can see a child's confusion that's the thing we think children are dumb or unintelligent but you know you talk to them as much as they may not understand what you're saying you can see when they when they see you communicating not talking at them and i feel, um as i'm saying now from experience like a lot of our parents will just talk at you Tell you, no, stop you there. Don't do that. Do this. Da, 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 da. You know, and it places you in a place where you're not really sure of yourself on what you can do or not do. You know, and then it becomes a rabbit hole when you come of age, when you're trying to figure out what you can and not do. And sometimes some of us, we are lazy in that mental work that we're just saying, ah, this is the life I have. I'll leave it as it is. Because it, it takes a lot to, to deactivate such and activate a whole new system of belief and way of being in precept. But I think I've spoken a lot. I guess I, I hope <laughs> I have been in line with um, answering the question, that fact that, yes, it is true. Like, I feel like they do come from our parents, our environment, you know, and um, the, the, almost like the veil that our parents can, can, can create for us between the world and... Uh, uh, and just insulate us in a place where we can understand ourselves first. So you know that you don't have to doubt yourself. You can do whatever it is that you, you may want to do. You know, don't doubt yourself, but that's, that's the way it is. You know, you come mm -hmm. up and our parents, they don't even, they don't, they, they can understand that one as well. Like, talk to us as well. As teenagers, all we, we just want to ask is, ah, you know, you maybe have got a question about sex, you know what I mean? But you know, from a from an African background, it's very hard to sit down and talk to your parents about sex unless uh, your parents are very open minded. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's certain things like that that you now have to go out and figure out yourself. When things go bad, it, it there's a lot of factors. To say there's only one way these doubts come from would be injustice to it's like a culminating sort of like world that's uh, around you. And unless you have this individual understanding that there is your being. Now, you remember that being, when I was talking about being, um, the mm -hmm. topic, yeah? 
the, yeah. what I meant was that fact of being you are a being that's it mm. yeah. you are a being yeah. does that make sense right mm. we then call ourselves human being right right but you are a being that just your creation you already are you just are a being right so when i'm saying like um in that space now when we take on these identities and we take on all that the the, the world tells us to shape our life in um the, the the way that we then like perceive our life we still are are unaware of that basic truth that's so powerful that you are being you are just a being you are being right now you are being right you are look what have you been doing oh you know i'm being i'm, I'm being a, a a podcast host right now right yeah oh mm. you know they, there's always this being right if you really listen to some some sentences we say to ourselves you know he was being angry mm. what do you mean he was being angry you know what i mean can you can you can you describe being or can you point at being he was being who was in a state of anger does that make sense you see yeah yeah so i understand that so it's like so so, so we're with emotions because just use anger as, as an example yeah we feel like sometimes we are that emotion ultimately my point we're, exactly whereas when we technically we're not it's just an experience yeah right so like yeah. 100% you know this is where um so i see this all the time especially this is yeah yeah anyway especially with like in like mental health right with like anxiety or depression yeah the, I don't know if you see this. It's like, you know, I, uh, you know, so, so there's kind of like this thing of like, oh, I have, it's, it's, I mean, maybe it's the same, but it's like, I have anxiety, right? Like I have the depression. And it's like, for me anyway, this links into what you're talking about. It's like, no, you experience those things mm -hmm. for, for certain reasons, you know? And so once you're able to get to the bottom of those reasons and work through that, then you could come out like the other side, you know? So yeah, I can, I, I'm on like a wavelength now of like mm. it with different emotions and kind of feelings and stuff. We associate ourselves with like, as you said, being angry, mm. you're having anxiety, whatever it mm. is, but, but really like raising our own consciousness, I guess, to, to, mm. to understand and to realize that these are just emotions or feelings that we can experience. And so mm. they don't necessarily, you know, they're not necessarily, well, they're not part of like who we are, I guess, of what you're coming back yeah. to of that, that, that being, am I on the same yeah. path? You're definitely on the same path. Definitely. Like, yeah. and you said it there, like now you think, you think to yourself, um, like you mentioned, like I have anxiety or I'm being anxious, right? We, 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 we wash over that word being, right? I'm being anxious, right? Let's talk about that one alone. When you are being anxious, like you say, it's a state of your being. Just as when you are angry, just as when you are happy, just as when you're in love, it's a state of being. If your being was locked in this room and you had nowhere to go or no one to touch, you know, he's being locked in the room, right? the being is being locked in the room you what that being then does in that room is a state of the beingness does that make sense so like you said it's about raising our consciousness now and and realizing no you are not under the emotion you are over the emotion you are the one that expresses that emotion right you are the one that as much as sometimes we may not have control we can come to a place where we can perceive that which is giving us anxiety and say, my being does not, I mean, it, it doesn't correlate with this. So I would rather be in a different, you know what I mean? I want to be, we talk about it, right? I want to be a star. I want to be a footballer. I want to, I want to be 
So the beingness is that your being, you can literally, like we're saying, that it's a, it, it's, it's a whole system of its own. It's a computer system of its own. It's a being. And when we hold on to, when you go back to the topic now, and we talk about maintenance, right? Maintaining a, 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 a new way of being, right? A new way of life, right? It's not necessarily something that we think to ourselves, okay, I want to become a millionaire. One day you wake up and you have a million bank, a million pounds in your bank. I'm, I'm pretty sure you've had many lottery people have committed suicide because they've just went from zero to one million or whatever million. Oh. Or, or there was this um, thing that I came across ages ago, of mm -hmm. like obviously so, you know some people do turn to those um, desperate measures, I guess. But they also of like how many people or you're know, like you've heard of or seen or, or you know, whatever that have won the lottery, etc., got a million, whatever the amount is, and then you see on the news the following year or in five years they've blown it all. So is you know so, it's yeah, it's it's the same, isn't it? You know. Hmm. So you know you, you find yourself now like where like when we go back to the transition thing we we're talking about, it, it's more than just you go from one state to the other. Your being needs it needs to be molded in a into into a being that can maintain one hundred million pounds know what to do with 100 million pounds, know how to disseminate it and do what and such, right? So if I have been living a life... As well. no, say that again. It comes back to beliefs as well. Like on the point of the, those that, um, they say, win, win the lottery and then blow it, or would you say within a year, it's because maybe they have an under, underlying belief of like, I don't deserve money or whatever it is. So then then they're not then able to maintain maybe the, the 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 pressure that might come mm -hmm. with winning that because they've got kind of <laughs> photographers outside their house of like one mm -hmm. you know take a picture with a huge check or whatever it is so they can so they can't maintain that uh, because mm -hmm. their underlying beliefs are like oh i don't deserve money or i don't deserve happiness or i don't deserve this, mm -hmm. and, this. and so then as we're talking about like their behaviors their actions are going to be in in alignment with their underlying beliefs and as we're talking about they're not going to be able to step into that new life and um ma maintain that which is why mm -hmm. overall i'm such of like a personal growth advocate and want to help so many people like just raise their own level of consciousness so they're they're always growing and moving forward um so that they're changing those underlying beliefs that are keeping them stuck ultimately you know yeah 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 and you know the thing about beliefs is that like it's you cannot tell somebody who says that no this is this is where i belong like you cannot tell, show them the world unless they believe that they can have a different place they will never you know, so it, it's it's like now when we're talking about this, like you coming from a place where you may probably have been earning like 250 a week kind of person, you know, no, nothing wrong with that, you know, and you've had your, your, your certain lifestyle, you know, within that budget. You have to remember your mind was also like, it, it just understands like, okay, this is the amount and I stretch this, this is, you know, your mental capacity, it's programming. You really, yeah, you know, it it it, it pro, it's programmed to understand like we maintain our being within this budget of this monetary sense of things, right? So when we are having a sudden influx of cash, there's a sudden influx of thoughts that your mind has never ever been able to even comprehend or even explore because of maybe your your environment or your beliefs and whatever. But now your being has been injected with something that it has never experienced before. And without mm. that former personal growth or work or understanding or even like, you know, taking 
I don't know, like those lessons that enable you to become more and more so that you can become that which you want to be, right? You are working yourself. Think about yourself, right? Think about where you started. Mm -hmm. Somebody, the day you said, I'm done with my life, that whatever life that you had before, right? And somebody hears you say this, and you say you want to help other people, somebody comes to you with a made-up uh, website, podcast ready to go, you know, client saying, you know, they want help with this, such and such, and say, here, look, you take care of this for me, because this is exactly what you want to do. As much as that's what you may have envisioned, it would have been too much too soon. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you've got to grow over time, you know, like through the lessons that you learn. Like when I first started content creation, I was doing like Facebook Lives every single day, you know. Mm. And so I learned so much through that. Then I was getting invited on type of people's shows. That's how I came into podcasting. But through that mm. journey, through that journey, you network with people, build new, new connections, like learn from them. Also start to question yourself, you know, there mm. is, you know, of like, you know, so let's just say I'm talking about personal growth and maybe some of the philosophies that I have. So like, on, I think I might have shared this with you before. The point on entrepreneurship for me when I first started, I was like, everyone, go out tomorrow and build your yeah. own business. And like, <laughs> fuck the system, right? Like, 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 you know, nine to five is just shit, right? Like, yeah. that was my, my, my mindset. That was a motto, and, yeah. <laughs> and over time, I realized, like, started to, like, question myself. And not everyone wants to become an entrepreneur. Not everyone wants to run, the, run their own business. Not everyone maybe although I believe that skill sets can be developed, maybe can or will, like whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but in, in a way that underlying belief of like, or premise of why I was saying those things then, and it, I think it's probably just developed today is because, or, or maybe I got more clearer on it, um, is for people to do something that they love ultimately. And, and, and I think that because I, got into entrepreneurship and I loved entrepreneurship I was saying like this is for everyone if that makes sense and once yeah. I kind of got more clear on that underlying premise and that underlying belief I kind of realized that sure you know entrepreneurship is, is the game that I've chosen um mm -hmm. but the underlying thing the underlying belief the underlying premise is to do something that you love because if you don't I've, I've said this question a million times. Yeah. What are we doing here? You know, like if you're going into work, like you can work nine to five. Make sure it's something you enjoy. We said it we on the episode with Paige because work is such a huge part of our life. And if we're not doing something mm. that we enjoy, you know, how, how how many years are we are we working for? You know, a lot. And again, so just focus on doing something that you love. So. And, you know, obviously I was sharing that because that's kind of been a little bit of kind of my growth within that and mm. becoming more clear on that underlying belief of why back then I was, sh I was sharing, you know, kind of um, fuck the nine to five, like screw that. It's all startup, our side hustles and businesses mm. right now, mm. you know, and then over time realized that that's not for all of us. But but surely what is for all of us is to do work that we we like the basic thing of like we enjoy like we we don't have to become super passionate about it and you know then go home and talk about it for you know our entire lives just going into work wanting to do that not getting to Monday morning and feeling depressed and not wanting to go because that puts you in in such of a bad place mm. yeah. And ultimately, just in just in enjoying the work that you do. So yeah, that's um, a, a bit of like my I guess like my growth on kind of the message I was sharing before and the message sharing now. Yeah, no, I, I hear that man. It's um, I, I always like these 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 conversations we have because they even give me. 
like an opportunity to just like um pour out the thoughts that I may have sometimes, you know? Because, mm. like, and to hear that somebody even resonates like that, like, it's nice because you understand that, you know, it. it's not just you who understands that there's a different way. You know mm. what I mean? And of, that's that's something I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying this podcast because the more and more we do this, to be honest, like, I like the fact that it's unorthodox. You know what I mean? <laughs> So the perspectives yeah. we're bringing here, as much as they may not be something that's orthodox, as people may flock to, I believe that this work will not go like unnoticed. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like what we're doing well, hopefully. here. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing here, we just need to keep doing what we're doing because having an, an a different approach to life is always important if we are mm. ready to extrapolate yeah exactly you know move yeah. forward extrapolate more out of life and see and experience more because therefore as a people we are the engineers of life in the world and the more we have a an individual perception to how we are contributing to the world the more life will become so beautifully diverse in the way that we express ourselves without any feeling of judgment of that the other person or someone out there will look at me and feel and feel differently you know, you know what? like sorry mm. i'll just share, share this one thing it kind of comes into what you're talking about yeah i think that there on an individual level and then on a collective level yeah has to has to be more sorry question it no worries. Yeah. Questioning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Has to, there has to be more um, questioning and challenging ultimately. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like on, yeah. on that individual level and on a collective level, we have to be able to, for time from within, question ourselves more. Mm-hmm all the way up to like high levels mm. so question and challenge more and when i say challenge i don't necessarily mean in like an aggressive way because you, because yeah. you, you can just, you can just challenge, challenge people like, yeah or somebody somebody that i work with call, calls it like a soft challenge right you can just challenge yeah. people by asking a question by asking a question right mm to get the other person thinking. And I think we have to be able to do that. To, that goes back into the point we're making to move the world forward, to raise human consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's through the asking of questions, the challenging, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, that people can think more for themselves. You know, that people can just start to... Yeah. yeah. Start to get the... Think, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, Cause so, part. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, definitely. I, I, I am I am thankful always for this platform because it's a place where we can really take this unorthodox perspective in a way that we can run with it, really. And I'm pretty sure we're not the only kind of people with this kind of perspective. And the more we just keep mm -hmm. sharing, like the more people we hear. And I think it's important to have that that um, place to be able to explore these ideas, like you're saying, being able to challenge. And being able to question, it's not necessarily an aggressive way, but being able to challenge is something where, so that others may also hold up, let me think about this as well. Do you know what I mean? And that in itself, like you said, because we've questioned and challenged ourselves to question and challenge society, society will question and challenge the world to change. You know, and like you said, it's a ripple effect from within ourselves to uh, those around us. And then it's, it, what we are is what will be. Does that make sense? You know, because you know, ah, man. Some sometimes uh, this 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 these thoughts, you know. Okay, how can yeah. I put this? What we are, right? In each and every single um, action of our being, right? 
is what we is what results is our world what do i mean by that like okay in the western side of the world right we've got technology is something that we are, what we we have and it's quite intrinsic to our being right so we are a people that are technologically advanced does that make sense yeah we are right we are beings that are very technologically intelligent right how does that translate to the world now of the first world countries right we've got internet we've got connection we've got you know constant connection instant connection you know there's many ways that this technology has enabled us to um, make up a world that if i was to drop you in some rural area on some other parts of the world that has never seen technology today you who knows technology and your beliefs and precepts that there is a thing that a message can quickly go to that other person that person who lives in that remote area probably needs to walk two days to get a message to the neighbor who lives two days away right and in yeah. their makeup and their belief they will walk those two days with mm. no stress no mm. fighting it and they are fully content but you who knows that you could have sent this message sitting on the fire maybe back at the, the, the place where you're living with these people but now you're having to walk this two uh two days those two days will feel like two years for you because you know a different way of being yeah. does that make sense 100%. Right? It's, it, it's like the the norms that we you know the, so, yeah you know it's like culture it's, it's like yeah i I 100% understand. Yeah. You know, so in that space now, like the world becomes as those people are. Those people are very patient. They are very, they, are, they don't, they take their time. You know, they, they communicate in that distance. You know, they are people that use fire. Maybe they go to the wood. So their world manifests to mirror them. You know what I mean? Here they are. You know, so, so everything that they are, and wherever they may be is in direct relation to how they think and how they believe and what they feel like life is do you know what i mean so until you that is coming from a technologically advanced place change now like when we go back to the topic of today transition right that time when you arrive you will fight it you will fight this new way of being you will fight this way of being right and you will say no 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 i know that there is another way right and for so long you can hold off depending on how strong you are you can hold off but there will come a time if it's a case that there is no option or no way to you for you to come off that place or, or out of that place there will come a time when you are pushed over the edge and you have to leap into that being now and become and live and thrive in that uh, in those in that space of precepts right what i would say and though I, well, what i would say Leroy, is that just using this example of actually yeah. sometimes because we're using the example of tech of obviously tech and stuff yeah of like what am i trying to say here that sometimes um this alternative way of being can actually therefore move everyone forward you know so still so kind of what we're talking about is if if we go from like the western culture maybe to um a third world country or whatever it is you know, then within yeah. us as, as a being has have mm. to adapt to kind of yeah. that those communities etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah but 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 like my i completely end get that Mm. but because we do know this and we know what's possible with this obviously we're talking about the western world yeah why don't we bring this in a way like with us you know to mm -hmm. make to then improve other communities ultimately you know it's yeah. a, for me they're therefore it's about like so 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 yeah it's about like collaboration partly that's kind of come into mind of like I can learn this culture. I can adapt my being without being open-minded, like flexible, like, 
you know, not just setting your roots, setting your ways. Seeing, and we spoke about it, I swear we spoke about it in the last episode, seeing multiple perspectives. Mm-hmm. See, experiencing multiple, co- you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. yes, I, I can change my being to this, you know, to kind of fit into, I hate the word fit in, to, to thrive in maybe this community or whatever yeah. it is, or this culture. And vice versa, you know, like yeah. over time, they can do do the same. And I think it's only actually with that. That's a f- part for me anyway, of like mm. raising human human consciousness, like coming back to that again and being more understanding of of, of just the, the world ultimately and different cultures and different societies and growing together, I guess, you know, yeah. ultimately of like, yeah, you know. Um, so that's that's... That's what I, 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 yeah, that's kind of some of my thought, I guess, thoughts on that is, yeah, nah, like it, it's yeah. in line as well with what we're talking about. I mean, when we take it and bring it all back around now, and you take the transition and we take uh, maintenance, as we said, this episode is about maintenance, maintaining yourself and your, your being in a new state of being, right? Mm. Like you just mentioned now. When we come together in that space, like there's that collective consciousness. When we are open-minded, like you said, and we are coming to to almost like edify each other's lives based on what we may individually know. When we come to edify each other's lives, there's a collective human consciousness that rises, mm. right? And that in itself does not limit one party or the other from being. No, it doesn't. Like you said, it gives us a caliodos dos what do you call caliodos peak or something like that. There's this word of for what yeah. you just mentioned there, caliodoscopic or something like that word. Like, and it, it means like having different perceptions, like different ways of of seeing. You know what I mean? And when we have this caliodos, I'm gonna learn that word. That is a to-do list today. <laughs> but, you know, when we become, when, when we come to that place now where we are learning new things, new words, new ways, new ways to interpret life, it doesn't limit your way of life. It doesn't mean your way of life is any less than that of, that is, of a technological advancement. Because now we all have our, our, our pros and cons from wherever we come from, right? As much as technology may look nice to somebody who's never looked at technology, we that know technology understand that they are that which is also bad when technology, like the more time you spend on it, our eyes can go bad, you know, radiation, all such and such that comes with the technology. But we look over those cons and amplify the pros because we understand how they have also edified our life. In that understanding, there's no point in now going into a new place and forcing that they need to come to your level of understanding for the world to be one or understand that, it, you know, this is what it is. But like you said now, when we are maintaining our being, when you're maintaining your place as a person of technology, a place of, you know, who you know these ways to make life better, and you move into a space where somebody else is, well, they are maintaining their way of being. Maybe they go and, 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 and get water from the, from the hole or whatever not that they may do. In that maintenance, there is that transition, right? The transition of technology and a ways of being from the other party. Transition of knowledge, transition of wisdom, all of that. When it comes from a place of edifying the other, we are communicating, right? What do you lack? Oh, I know more about, I know something about that which you lack, right? Oh, what do you lack? Oh, you don't have lights. We know more about what you do not know about, right? That edification brings about that higher consciousness where that the person who didn't know about technology now knows about technology and how to what, edify their own life. The person who didn't know maybe about how to, I don't know, that there's a fruit tree that you can eat off or whatever. Not Now you've learned more about nature that you didn't know before because you were in town or you were in a city, right? Consciousness is raised and everybody's lives, it, it, you feel a bit more edified. You know, there's more to you. Do you know what I mean? But when we go into a space and then we try and take 
um, and change to maintain our own self and promote our egotistical way of being, then it, it limits that perception of diversity that we can have as a people, as human beings. Because you cannot have, how many continents, continents do we have? Six or what? It's too many people for all of us to live and direct a same life. We have six different directions that we're looking at, mm. and that can only give us six different ways to also what look at life. And the more we can accept each other, like you said, like and have that understanding that there are those that are privileged and that those are not, but we can share in a way that like everybody becomes what content at least you know what i mean mm -hmm. in in understanding that you your being and your being is not in any way violating any other person's maintenance of their self and their being mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. you know when we so, when we look at it like that in a collective i mean we've looked at it in three different parts it to just yeah. summarize i guess you know we we first spoke on that individual level we've got that inside whisper inside you know the environment that may be or the precepts that we may have come to understand based on our upbringing. And then when we come into a place where we, we look at this maintenance in a collective manner, you know, we understand that like, when we maintain a certain way, like you said, Luke, it creates our culture, our way of norms, our way of beings, right? That is now a, a maintenance that we hold. But like you said, Luke, when we when we struggle to question ourselves, and we will we will hardly question society and challenge it into moving and growing into another state of, of consciousness of you know learning more and not being stagnant, you know. And like we like we said, what we are or how what we are is what will be. Does that make sense? You know, the world as it is is because of what we are in whatever state or whatever place you may live or we may be from mm -hmm. is because the collective has manifested itself to be that which you see your world to be. But that doesn't mean that's the only way of the world. Until we go out, mm -hmm. we will never know. You know what I mean? But it's yeah, man, I talk too much it's sometimes. Just, man, you know? it's should it's let me you should just say Leroy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, for like five, final, final thought from me. I just yeah. kind of realized something. Because mm. we're talking a lot about beliefs and, and being. I might research this actually and then and then we can talk about it. But I'm just gonna like even the word beliefs has be in it, right? Like so I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know where I'm going with this, Leroy. But you we're know what going, I'm saying? Man. Like be like we're beliefs, going, beliefs. Keep going. We're human be human beings. Yeah, you see, yeah. I, I don't I, I don't know what this is, you know. So you go, um, I, I'm That's I'm gonna it, research man. this. I'm gonna research this, but, <laughs> really but, but I think that like break the word down or something of like mm -hmm. you know, because ultimately it comes back to that point you mentioned of what we believe we like who we are is like how we're gonna show up. So anyway, we've been going for like over an hour, so over an hour, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but um i don't know that, that was like a final one, one final something that's in my mind right now of, of yeah. when we're kind of kind of talking about that of what we we are is like you know yeah it's just just something that's coming to me um mm. so uh, guys i'm gonna go and do more research around that but um it's been an awesome episode leroy do you have any final thoughts no, I think I think you've you finished it there. I think going and researching that, I think it's a good uh, final thought. Really, uh, excuse me that, but yeah, like I I I, I can't add anything to that to be honest, because it is what it is, as they call it. You know, mm -hmm. like we are what we are. Like I think the less we look at ourselves as flawed and like um no up to the standard or the norm of society, when we realize that the norm is only because of the collective that you find yourself around, which mm. creates and manifests their, you know, culture or, you know, the place you may find yourself, it, that mm. does not define your being, as we were talking about. 
but you know your being is really and truly it's up to you to define what your being is if you want to be a being of anxiety that's you. if you want to be a being of content of love that's you that's the always the ultimate thing oh man I, I, my system is going to turn off soon so i'm going to say my peace you can say okay. our byes but uh, it's been lovely it's been a pleasure guys take care and stay blessed awesome <laughs> Awesome. So guys, we will be back next week for the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed this one. And um, yeah, I think Leroy's phone has died or something. So um, thank you for listening, watching. If you like this episode, subscribe, leave a review and feedback. Like we always love feedback, suggestions for topics that we can kind of talk about and discuss. And hopefully in the next couple of episodes, we'll also have some guests because it's been a couple of weeks since we've had a guest on the show. Anyway, guys, peace out. Have a great rest of your week. Hey, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Unorthodox Perspectives. If you liked today's episode on the show, please subscribe and leave a comment below. All relevant links for today's episode of the podcast can be found in the description, so please check them out. And we will be back next week with another episode. Until then, have, have an, an awesome, awesome week. week.